Hi, you're listening to Bridal and Ride on Air. I'm Caitlin, and welcome to your go-to horse lovers podcast. In this episode, we'd like to tell you why balancing teeth is so important and why we advise you to have a vet with specialization in dentistry come and check your horse before a fitting. Hello everyone. Before I begin, I have a small disclosure. If you hear a strange noise in the background, or you hear a sort of growling sound, snoring sound, it's not me, it's my dog. He's laying next to me with his feet in the air, snoring his little head off, so um, it can't be helped. I can't switch him off, so you just have to ignore it if you hear something in the background. It's not me, I promise. Now that's cleared up, let's get started. I want to talk about how pressure relates to balancing teeth. I hope by now that everyone knows that it's important that you have your horse's teeth checked on a regular basis. If you didn't know that, well, I'm telling you now. Now, when we start with young horses, we know that we have to get a saddle fitter to come and check out what size, what shape is suited for our horse. We expect the saddle fitter to give us a saddle that um, divides the pressure evenly on the horse's back, doesn't give him pressure points that are um, uncomfortable or sore. Um, We want something that's balanced very nicely. Then we have the same issue when we're finding a bit for a young horse. We want a bit that the horse accepts nicely, that, you know, divides the pressure in the mouth, doesn't give them sores, feels nice and comfortable, they relax in it. And then, of course, we have someone fitting a bridle for our horses. Well, some of us do, not everyone, of course. What do we expect? A bridle that doesn't give pressure points, peak pressure points, that doesn't rub, doesn't feel uncomfortable, but divides the pressure over the head, feels comfortable, fits nice and snug, and um, the horse can, you know, relax and feel well with. And then the last one that we always think of and don't forget is we have the blacksmith coming. Now, I know not all young horses have shoes, but we do want the blacksmith to come and balance the feet, make sure all four feet are nicely straight, the same height, the same shape, the same size, that they walk correctly, that they move in a comfortable way without having peak pressures on one side or the other. And then we have a dentist coming. Now, I hope you ask a veterinarian with specialisation in dentistry to come because these people are highly qualified. They know, in most cases, the very big importance of balancing teeth. Now, most people just ask a dentist to come or a vet to do the teeth or um, someone else that does it. And we just say, oh, we just want them them to um, remove the hooks and the little sharp edges. I mean, seriously? We just want them to remove hooks and sharp edges? No, I'm sorry. This isn't really the best way of how we should look at it. If you have your horse's teeth done, we want them to be balanced as well. Of course we want the hooks removed and we want the sharp edges removed. But I don't know if you realise this, but the most important part of the teeth being checked and being balanced is just that fact, the balance of it. Now, if there's one thing that all our horses do from morning to night, each day, it's chewing. The little mouths, they don't really stand still, do they? They chew thousands of times per day, grinding their food down. That's just one of the reasons why it's so important that the back teeth, called the molars, are nicely balanced. Uneven pressure over the molars can also influence many other chains in the body. I'll give you three consequences of peak pressure points and uneven teeth in horses. Now the first one won't come as a surprise to you, I think. Peak pressure points on teeth can damage the teeth itself because with every chewing movement they're making, there'll be peak pressure on the one tooth or two teeth or three teeth that have too much pressure on them. You can have teeth breaking off. You can have teeth that start to feel very loose in the mouth You can also get gum infections because of the teeth that are too loose and moving and then bacteria getting in. You can also get gaps between the teeth, something that we really don't want with the molars of a horse because if you have gaps between the teeth, there can be food that gets lodged in between them and then they get infections because of that. 
And of course, you know, if you don't have the teeth checked at all and they have a very unbalanced row of teeth, you can also later on um, create root infections that can also lead to jaw infections, losing more teeth and having a lot of mouth problems in general. So I don't want to frighten you, but that was just one aspect of it. The second consequence is overloading the TMJ. Peak pressure on a small part of the teeth row can give discomfort and tension in the jaw, meaning that with every chewing movement the horse makes, it'll cause pain. Not only is eating discomfortable for the horse at this point, when you're riding your horse, you'll get a loss of throughness because they'll feel tighter at the jaw and probably also be tighter in that direction as well. So your horse won't feel as flexible and elastic from left to right. The tension caused at the TMJ isn't going to stay in one place. It will flow through to the hyoids as well. Which brings us to consequence number three. There's so much that can be said about the TMJ and the hyoid. But for consequence number three, I just want to stipulate the hyoid is connected to nerves and also muscles. Two very important muscles are the neck muscles that are attached to it. The first muscle runs from the hyoid to the chest and the second muscle runs from the hyoid to the inside of the shoulder. Now if you get tension in these muscles, it's going to cause a less fluent movement of the horse and a shortening of the pace. The lack of movement in the shoulder and base to the chest will also cause compensating in the whole of the body. So it's like a chain reaction. So this is where your dentist comes in. You need to ask him to balance the teeth well so you don't have peak pressure points on one side or the other or peak pressure caused by a certain tooth that's overgrowing a little bit. Now let's compare the feeling of peak pressure to a human. Have you ever had a filling done in your teeth? Well, if you have, then you know that the dentist will fill your tooth up or the hole in your tooth with filler. And then after that, he'll check with a piece of colouring paper or carbon paper that you need to bite down on to see if um, the markings correspond, the top with the bottom tooth. And then he'll file it a little bit or remove a bit of the filling um, or grind it down with a little machine to make sure that you don't have a certain area or a little part of the filling that's pressing too much on the bottom tooth because it feels really, really annoying. Well, that's the type of feeling the horse feels as well when they have a peak pressure on the teeth. It's like the little detail on the tooth that's very hindering and annoying to feel because it's always there and it won't go away. Now the key thing to remember is, how did your dentist do it? That's right. He asked you to close your mouth, put your teeth together to see where there was or there wasn't a peak pressure point. So in fact your dentist is going to do the same thing for your horse approximately. Okay, he's not going to use carbon paper because horses chew left to right and it'll, it'll just rip the paper and you have no markings left. But um, they are going to start, first of all, by removing hooks and sharp edges with an open mouth. And once that's done, to see how to balance the teeth correctly, they'll close the horse's mouth a few times and open them again to check that the surface of the teeth touch evenly. I see this as the fine tuning. This is really where the magic happens. I hope by scratching the surface of the subject, I've made you interested in the importance of having your horse's teeth checked. Of course, there are other consequences as well. So I'll tell you a little anecdote of something that happened a few years ago with a client of mine. I was called out to visit a lovely sports pony that had been well educated and they were noticing that they had an uneven contact and the pony was stiff to one side and they weren't sure whether it was a issue in the body or not or perhaps a bitting issue or a bridle issue now they've had a therapist come and check and they hadn't found any problems in the body the saddle fitter had been as well which didn't show any problems either so then they called me a little bit as last resort because they didn't understand why it was difficult for the pony to just do his work in a straight line for example so I visited this pony two times in a time span of, I think it was four weeks. The first time I visited him, we did the all-round checkup. You know, we looked at the head, didn't see any features that were abnormal. Then we looked at the teeth and I did see that the teeth had been filed down 
um, and it didn't have hooks or sharp edges. On asking the people how long it had been, they said it was about four or five months before that the dentist had visited them, so it wasn't that long really. Um, But there was quite a big difference between left and right. So either the dentist that had visited them doesn't balance teeth normally, or it was a pony that had a very big preference to chewing on one side, or perhaps something in the mouth was causing discomfort, making him chew on one side. Now I wanted to rule out that the bit or bridle were causing discomfort for this pony, so I did ask them to ride him for me as well. The rider did a really good job because she did her best to make him nice and straight for me, but you could see that he had a very big difference between left and right. But the biggest um, issue for me was that the pony was always keeping the hind end slightly to the left. Whether he was on the left hand or the right hand side, he just kind of made a soft C shape in his body and he kept it that way. It made no difference whether he was tracking straight ahead, to the left, to the right. He just kept his hind quarters a little bit to the left. It was subtle, but you could always see it. Now we checked the bit and the bridle and I have to say he was very comfortable with the bit they were using. Even though he wasn't completely through, um, I was quite sure it wasn't due to the bit that he wasn't as supple and elastic to the contact as as he could be. They were very lucky that the dentist could come very quickly for them. So the pony got his teeth balanced very nicely and correctly by a dentist that specialised in this matter. And um, I did ask the people that after the dentist came to video the pony to let me see how he's reacting and what the changes were. And I was very surprised when they sent me the first video of the rider with her pony two or three days after the teeth had been balanced and you could see the pony instead of tracking to the left with his hind quarters was tracking to the right with his hind quarters so his balance had been very much affected by the disbalance in his teeth so the pony thought he was tracking straight with his disbalanced teeth but in fact he was holding his hind quarters to the left And after the teeth being corrected, it was like a reboot of the computer. And the first week he preferred tracking to the right with his hindquarters because that was his new straight in his body. But luckily, after I think about 10 days approximately, maybe two weeks, it straightened out and he'd find his balance again. And then he was tracking very nice and straight, not to the left, not to the right. It was a nice straight pony with the same rider with the same riding techniques so it wasn't the rider influencing them and it was just because the teeth had been balanced and therefore the body was in balance. This is just a very simple example of how important balanced teeth are. This pony got a yearly visit, he's looked after very well and on the outside you couldn't really see any problems at all. His contact was okay, his mouth was nice and still, the riding was correct, the rider was riding him correctly. His education had been correct as well, but it just makes it very clear that small details can make a big difference for horses and ponies alike. With this small anecdote, you now know consequence number four. The balance of the horse can be influenced by a disbalance in teeth. Thank you for listening, and I hope it was interesting. See you later. Thank you for listening to Bridal and Ride on air. I hope you enjoyed it. Follow our podcasts, write a little comment or share it for your friends. If you have any suggestions, just send us an email at info at bridalandride.com. My name's Caitlin and there's more to come soon. <laughs>